but I keep on believing it will be a place like I've never known. I keep my eyes on the sky, cause my soul wants to fly. Lord, my heart is ready to go. I want to know how it feels to make my way down the street of gold. I want to know how it feels to have a talk with Amen. We want to greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Boy, it's good to see this many in God's house tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Appreciate. Um, this is the last service of the March movement. I want to say I appreciate all the churches that have backed that. Uh, what a blessing. Amen. And uh, I tell you, I've been fed each service. And uh, how about you? Uh, God's been good. I don't know about you, but it, it helps me. Uh, you know, preachers need preaching too. Amen. And I thank God uh, that you're here tonight and all the churches that are represented. Uh, now, what we're going to do tonight, we're just going to worship the Lord. Um, if, you, if you shout at your church, you can shout here. Amen. 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 Uh, somebody says, well, preacher, now I don't know about inviting all of that. Well, if, uh, hey, if, if God's in it, it'll be decent and it'll be, and it'll be in order. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know what's decent and I know what's order. All God people say it. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Again, thank God for all the pastors, all the churches that are uh, represented here tonight. It's good to have Brother Jonathan Cable. Uh, he pastors the uh, Faith Temple Tabernacle in Morganton. Amen. They, they canceled. They didn't cancel. They transferred their service up here tonight. It's good to have them. Brother Jonathan, would you take us to the throne of grace? Amen. All right, you may be seated if you can. Uh, help, help these folks smile. This service is uh, not about you. It's not about going home, church. Amen. It's all about the Lord. Amen. And so let's worship God tonight. Amen. And what He would have us to do. Good to have Brother Nathan Jennings with us tonight. Amen. Amen. Good to have him. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. Uh, he'll be doing the preaching in a little while. You lift him up to Jesus. Good to have the Louder family with us tonight. Uh, if you've never heard these girls and, and mom, all of them's girls, ain't they? Amen. Um, you, you're in for a treat. But I want to ask the choir. I'd like for us to our choir if they would to come. Let's fill the choir up, okay? Okay, all every, everybody better sing. Come on, choir. Don't don't wait on somebody else. This ain't the, this ain't the night to lay out a choir. Yes.
it feels to know something's missing. Hear a still small voice. You just keep dismissing. Do you know how it feels to be troubled inside? To think just for you on a cross someone died. Do you know how it feels when he knocks to surrender? Have your sins washed away? Never to be.
Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? When they about my Jesus, if he ain't the feeling, the rain can't help from healing, the rain can't help from healing. When they about my Jesus, oh, he makes the way. Man, they're from down in the, is it the Hudson, Granite Falls area? Is that right? Am I right there? Hudson area. Amen. They've been a real blessing to this church. Amen. And Amen. they're going to, I got a special request. Do you know what it is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
if you doubt him, just read through me. Thank God for his presence, don't you? You go places tonight, you can't feel what you feel tonight. Now, it ain't all in feeling. But something as big as God get in you. You'll feel something. It's good to have Brother Nathan Jennings, amen, pastor of the First Free Will Baptist Church there in Elizabeth and Tennessee. There's been a lot of prayers prayed for this man. Lifted him up, amen, and the Lord laid him on my heart. I thought, well, maybe maybe I shouldn't call, but I called him anyway. God put him there. Amen. And uh, you pray for him tonight. Yes. Lift him up to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. You, you bless the man of God as he comes. Yes. Shares, his, shares the word with us. I've got to take my time. Every, you know, back in July, when I just about lost my mind, had a nervous breakdown, and, and then in August I did everything I could to try to not quit on God, but I guess just retire from the ministry. And I looked at Dawn and, and Mama and all my doctors, and I said, well, I've been 12 years at the church, 20 years preaching, 
And I thought uh, it would be a good time just to retire. And I said, I'm going to call all the preachers and see if they'll come up and have a piece of cake with me. <laughs> and anybody else that wanted to come. And I went before deacons and trustees at the church, and I said, going to resign. And they said, no, you ain't. <laughs> and I, I said, I'm a quitting. They said, over our dead body. <laughs> and I said, well, I can't even stand anymore. They said, well, sit. I said, what if I can't sit? I said, what if I can't sit? And they said, we'll get you a hospital bed, and we'll set it up on the stage and sit as long as you've got air in your lungs, preach. And I'm not going to get into it. I'm thankful for my church family. First off, I, I want to say I'm thankful for God. I would not be here without Him. And then I'm thankful for my family. My wife has been my rock. <laughs> and my girls, man, and, and my mama, she stayed with me every day all the way up till December or the first of the year. And uh, I said, well, I've got to learn how to make it on my own somehow. How? And Jesus has reminded me every day that I ain't never been alone. And then my church family, and it's good to have my chauffeurs with me again. I can't drive no more. Listen, they, they've just about revoked my license for this. But I can't drive and may never get to again, and that's all right. And I'll be honest with you, there's a lot that took place July, August, September, and October that I don't even know about. 10 and 11 and 12 seizures, 10 and 11, 12 minutes at a time, and, and then diagnosed CIDP on top of it and happened to take treatments, but through it all, God is good. Yeah. So many churches gave love gifts, and uh, listen, I got so depressed, you all bought me a lot of ice cream, don't even know it. <laughs> I'm extra nervous tonight. This is the first time I've preached outside of our, our place, so I'm nervous. But that God would let me get to preach here and amongst preachers, that are like my family, and everybody here is like my family. And then I got to have a treatment yesterday morning, and today kind of gave me an extra boost, and, and God's got it all worked out. And then this dear family that sung, and sis, the, the, the older child, what's your name, honey? Adeline, that's pretty. Adeline, from that very first song, God gave me confirmation of what I'm supposed to preach tonight. I'll get into that in just a moment. But listen, every, every church that's, that's loved us and supported us and prayed for us, thank you. Me and Dawn, we tried to get cards back out. I'll be honest, I don't know if we did. And forgive us, we had a lot going on. But Dawn tried to send all the... Uh, churches, a thank you card, and and uh, and then the the conference. I think the Foothills done something for us. And pe every, listen, you all just loved on us, just loved on us. I still get cards every week from people and from the different churches, and every month. And I kept every one of them because I'll be honest. The devil said, "Just just quit. You're done." And I'll pull out them cards. Now listen, I'm, I'm hoping not, not to offend anybody tonight. Uh, if I have to sit down, will you forgive me? I, I don't want to offend nobody, but I did come to offend one. <laughs> and if I offend the devil, he can just get over it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if I get sideways, I'll either blame the Holy Ghost or Medicine One. 
Hallelujah. But when Brother Jeff asked me if I'd come, I, I, I told Dawn, I said, I want to take my time just to stand up in front of everybody and thank you personally from faith, you know, face to face. And, uh, and I love all of you. I could keep on keeping on, but I've got an itch. And I, 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 I've got to give you what God's given me. I want to be a help to you. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Jeremiah chapter 29. Or excuse me, Jeremiah 20 verse 9. And then I want you to go to James 4, 7. I, I want choir. Everything's been extra good. The singing, everything. Wonderful spirit. I want you to go to Jeremiah 20 verse 9 in the Old Testament and James 4, 7 in the New Testament. And I'll be honest, you can just turn anywhere. It's all good. Yeah. And there's a chance that I'll probably be wherever you turn sometime. All Lovians have heard me long enough that sometimes I go from A to Z. I can't help it. I may preach everything I know tonight, and that ain't a whole lot, but I know Jesus. I'm going, I don't know if this will, will you just help me pray that God will let me get it out as he's put it in? Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you the title. I normally don't do this. I'll forget. But I, I'm going to preach on this thought. Go ahead and tell the devil that I changed my mind. <laughs> Just go on ahead and tell the devil that I changed my mind. Jeremiah 20 verse 9 said, Then I said... I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And didn't little Adeline sing about that, that first song, amen? And, and, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Now, Jeremiah sounds like he wanted to quit, but then he said his word is in my bones like a fire. So it's kind of like he's saying this, tell the devil that I changed my mind. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And there are some things we can do because we've changed our mind about it. Amen. Amen. I want you to be able to leave here tonight as a child of God, so full of the Holy Ghost that when you wake up tomorrow morning, the devil says, I just can't handle it any longer. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes, I've made it a priority as long as God will let me until he takes me uh, by the grave or by the rapture, I'm going to do everything I can to get on that joker's nerves. Amen. Praise God. Brother Justin, you pray for us. I love you. Let's just jump in with both feet. Amen. Cannonball in Jesus' name. Again, Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 29, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. 
His word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing I could not stay. And then the Bible says that if we will submit ourselves to God and resist the devil, the Bible says that the devil will flee. Now, way before you can ever submit, amen, or let me say it this way, resist the devil, you have to submit to God. You have to let the Lord be Lord and Savior over your life. He is either the Lord of all or He ain't the Lord at all when it comes to your life. I remember several years ago we were at a youth camp and this was a youth camp that had horseback riding. And it had been quite a long time since I had done any horseback riding. I'll be honest, I was a little boy and probably done it at a fair and that was under somebody's supervision and under somebody's control. I'll be honest, I was afraid to go to Walmart and get on that 25 cent horse, amen, because I thought it might take off. And so anyways, we had some young people, 16, 17, 18 years of age, and some counselors, and they said, Hey, uh, Nathan, we don't want to do the hike. We don't want to do the fishing tournament. Can we go horseback riding? And I said, Man, I love horseback riding, even though I didn't know how. And so anyways, we get to this corral. We get to these horses, and, and uh, the man said, Are you one of the preachers? I said, Yes. He said, you know, Brother Nathan, after I told him who I was, he said, there's all kinds of preachers. He said, there's loud preachers. There's soft preachers. He said, there's skinny preachers. There's big preachers. There's tall preachers. And there's short preachers. And said, God uses them all. I said, yes, sir. He said, listen, that's like horses. He said, we got horses for short people. We got horses for tall people. We got horses for the skinny people and the big people. He said, we've got horses for people that have never ridden before. He said, they're horses that have never been ridden. <laughs> and so anyways, I said, well, I'm under all, or over all, all these children. Got to get them home safe. And they've signed the papers and all that, the insurance, whatever you call it. And uh, you know that mom and dad wouldn't come back and sue if I let their necks get broke. <laughs> And so anyways, they just started taking off in all these horses. Brother Jeff was trained. I mean, they's all, you know, just a clip, a clop, a clip, a clop. They's all just doing good. And everybody got the horse. This little kid got a horse. This teenager got a horse. This, and then all of a sudden, I heard one just, I mean, snorting. And, and, and I mean, ooh. And I mean, go, I mean, uh, hell, fire, and brimstone coming out of its nostrils. And, 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 and I, I said, I'm interested in that horse. I think its name was Pepto-Bismol. And so anyways, I got on that thing. And listen, they already on the trail. And this horse, I mean, whoa, it takes a whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, this is how fast it went. I went past my group. I got to the end of the tour. It turned around. It hit I mean, I passed my tour coming. Honest truth, Lord, as my witness. I'm coming back and I see this gate. I see that man. I see that dude. And the gate gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, whoa. <laughs> An idleness. Boom. I hit the ground and I landed in a big old pile of manure that I still smell right now. And this has been about seven years ago. <laughs> now you say, preacher, I wonder what happened. Well, I wasn't lowered over that horse. I wasn't in control. I wasn't the master over that horse. It was in control over me. Amen. I'm going to tell you before we can ever resist the devil before we can ever tell the devil when he comes with his tricks and with his lies and all that, way before we can ever resist him, we better make sure that we have first submitted ourselves to an almighty God in heaven. 
Now, can I be honest with you tonight? There's a lot of believers in the world today. I'm talking about church-going folk. Amen. That tithe and wear, wear their Sunday best and carry a Bible and listen to preaching and pretty solid and maybe what their stance is for the Lord. But did you know that about 49% of the believers in the United States today by by way of, uh, of uh, I guess, interviewing, barn or whatever it's called, about 49% don't even believe that there is a real devil. They think, well, he's just some kind of symbol of evil and he's got a pitchfork and he's got a, t- a pointy tail and he's got horns. Well, listen, the Bible lets us know that he has a beautiful figure. Yeah, he is enticing. Can I say this about the devil? He's pretty slick tonight. I mean, listen, I'm 43-year-old. I got saved when I was seven. I've been in church my whole life. I've tried to be sold out for Jesus. Been preaching 20 years. Hey, man, I mean, want to preach till I die as long as God will let me. And I hope, listen, for everybody that's here that knows me, I hope you know me and, and, and you know my heart tonight, not that I'm anything outside the Lord. But, hey, I'm telling you, the last night of our, of our youth camp back in June, I talked with a preacher and I talked with a young person from their church and something that they were going through brought up something that happened in my life from a family member when I was a little boy and out of nowhere the devil got me physically and he got me mentally and he got me emotionally and he just about got me spiritually but I'm glad he can only go as far as the Lord will let him go everything is filtered through the hand of the Lord and the Bible says greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world But he had me, Brother Silver, just about ready to quit. But Sister Angie, I want to tell him tonight I've changed my mind. Yeah, Yeah, man. Mama, there might be some times that I say, Mama, I don't know if I can keep on going. I don't know if I can keep on preaching. I want you, Mama, or Mama Valerie, or Mama Sheila, somebody. Let Brother Austin text me, bless your heart, or something, and say, hey, Brother Nathan, remember, tell the devil that you changed your mind. Hey, listen, any man of God, any child of God, if the devil has tried to one time get you to quit, it's time to look him in the eyes and say, hey, old Slufa, I've changed my mind. Man, when this is over, I'll be ready for two fish sandwiches or something. (laughs) Hebrews, let me give you a few verses because we'll come back and reference them if the Lord will let us. Hebrews 10, 36, For ye have need of patience or perseverance or endurance and says that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. I'm t- I, I, know, I know that this is the revival of the conference and I know a lot of preachers here and I want to speak to the hearts of the preachers but I beg God to give me a message that would help everybody that's here. Listen, the Bible says right now we need perseverance. Right now we need patience. Right now we need endurance to be able to do the will of God that He's called us to do. And one day he'll say, I mean, I hope, preacher, that I hear well done, good and faithful servant. Then we'll receive the promise. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 at that latter part, amen, that all those that went through all those trials and mockings and scourgings, amen, that they're going to receive the promise. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 at verse 6, he said, For I'm now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is left for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but all those that love his appearing. Amen. But Paul ain't got the promise yet. Amen. There's a lot that have not received the rewards yet. And the Bible says they won't till we get there. What are we going to do with our rewards? Just give them right back to Jesus. Because the only reason old Nathan gets to go 
It's because of Jesus. Amen. Only reason any of us get to go is because of Jesus. Amen. First Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary who? The devil. is as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. In John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and destroy. I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundant. You remember, I believe it's over there in Acts chapter number 19. I don't have it in my notes, but in Acts 19 or in Acts 20, you remember the story, uh, was it the seven sons of Sceva that came and they tried to preach Jesus, the one whom Paul was preaching, not some other Jesus. They tried to copy what Paul was preaching. And what did those evil spirits say? said, hey, Paul we know, Jesus we know, but who are ye? Amen. Hey, listen, I'd be worried if the devil didn't know my name. Amen. Praise God. I want to make sure, hey, listen, he gets on my nerves. I want to make sure I get on his nerves. I've made up my mind. Amen. See, I thought about this. He's tried to get me to quit. Brother Turner, I want to give him such, such whatever that I try to talk him into quitting. Have you ever thought, praise God. I mean, Brother Jeff, wouldn't you love to live your life in such a way and men of God pastor and lead in such a way that when you get to heaven, Jesus says, you almost made the devil quit. Man. Woo. I ain't never thought of that before. If I ever write a book, I'm putting it in there. Somebody remind me. Amen. Now, listen, I, I'm going to just jump right in to a few thoughts that God's laid on my heart. If you're one that takes notes, if you're a note taker, and uh, I hope this don't bother anybody used to, I could just kind of, well, first off, I have to hang on, and then you never know which way, which rabbit trail my mind will go. So I've got stuff written down, so just in case I get over there somewhere, I can get back. If I get out there somewhere and I'm way off topic, somebody just come up and finish preaching. Amen. It'll be all right. Now, I want you to know you can't quit. And I want you to know that you've got to change your mind if you want to. And I want you to know that if you change your mind and if you purpose in your heart that, hey, I'm going to endure, I'm not going to throw in the towel, I'm going to keep on keeping on, it's, it's by letting the devil know some things right here and right now. Amen. You've got to let him know about the Christian's resistance. Again, I use these as a springboard, but in James 4, 7, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Resist means to stand firm against. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, 12, and 13, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Can I tell us tonight we can't stand in our own power. We can't stand in our own strength. Hey, I want you to know tonight we are no match for the devil. But he ain't no match for our God. I mean, it's not like Brother Austin that I said, you know, devil, bring it on. I ain't that stupid. One time I did. I was a preaching in a big way at Keystone several years ago. And I mean, not that I'm meaning. it. I mean, I was just preaching. I had my spiritual Cheerios. And I was feeling good. And I mean, I was just, any, anybody, I don't know if any other preacher's ever done this. I'm good at opening up my mouth and insert my size 14. And I said, devil, whatever you got, bring it on. Boy, I, ended, I was in the hospital the next day. So it's not that I've tried to tempt him or try him, but I hope that I've just tried to ring his bell a few times. Amen. I, I, I hope and pray that I've lived my life, not that I've attained, not that I've apprehended, but this one thing I do, pressing toward the mark, forgetting those things which are behind. I'm a looking for heaven. I'm looking for the finish line. I'm looking for the end zone of life. Amen. Not that I'm perfect. None of us are. But I want to live my life in such a way that it makes the devil mad. 
Maybe it's good if he never leaves you alone. Maybe that means that he ain't got you. See, he don't bother those that he's got. Amen. But it's not by your might or by your strength or by your power. But it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7 that God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I'm talking about resistance. You say, preacher, how in the world do we resist the devil? Well, a good thing is with the word of God. In Matthew chapter number 4, the Bible says that Jesus was led of the spirit into the wilderness. And the Bible says that he spent 40 days out there and afterwards he was thirsty and he was hungry and you know that he was tired and the devil came on the scene. Everybody knows this story, so I'll not spend a lot of time on it. But the devil tried to get him to give in three different times. He said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. You can take this stone and turn it into bread. Uh, the angels, you can jump off a pinnacle and the angels will come and bear thee up and everything will be all right. But how did Jesus come back at the devil? It is written. Three times. It is written. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, it is written. Tempt not the Lord thy God. It is written. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I, what I'm trying to tell you is he kept giving him the word. You know what? Read your Bible. Reread your Bible. Reread your Bible. Memorize your Bible. His word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank God for the word. You can, I mean, one, one way, mama, that I kept him just from getting me completely is the word of God. Reading the word of God. Sister Angie, there was nights I couldn't. I'm thankful I'm thankful that I don't know about one seizure that I had. I mean, I don't renew, know when I've had them. I mean, I knew after somebody, but I don't remember them, thank God. Now, when I have them, it's usually bad nightmares. And uh, I, I constantly have nightmares that I'm paralyzed or they're taking my legs off or different things like that. And I might have one in the middle of the night and dawn wake me up. And But, uh, but you know... My father-in-law spent, the mom spent every day. My daddy-in-law spent every night with us. And, uh, and Don said, you know, it gets scary. And says, sometimes we don't know what we're going to do. When Nathan's in, I mean, there was a time. And I'm not trying to preach on me. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, try to be a help. And it helps me, I guess, telling. But I, they said one night, Mom was there, and Daryl was there, and Ashley was there, and Abby was there, and Dawn was there, and it took all of them to hold me down, trying to keep me from swallowing my tongue and banging my head against the floor. And I'm glad that I don't remember that. But, I mean, Dawn said, you know what makes it good? Is knowing Daddy's in the house. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise God. I'd be on that couch and Dawn would be asleep. Mom would be asleep. Daryl would be asleep. The kids would be asleep. But there was still one that didn't slumber or sleep. Amen. Hey, I will praise God. I want you to know that his eyes are always on you. His eyes are always on you. Hallelujah. Man, I had butterflies, but they're flying in formation. Praise God. I'm talking about resisting with the Bible. And Daryl would try, they, Dawn and Daryl would try to do devotions and they'd try to pray and they'd try to read, read the Word of God. And I'll be honest, now I, 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 hope, I don't want to make nobody mad, but I'd have seizures. And I'd say, Dawn, I can't pray. And Dawn, I can't read my Bible. And I'd be at home and she'd turn on, I mean, she'd turn on a lot of you preachers. You'd be preaching and I'd have seizures. We'd watch the services and, and I mean the devil was just trying to rob me of the joy of the Lord. 
that peace that passes all understanding. And people, listen, preachers, forgive me. People, men of God, call, text. And some probably, I, I, I still ain't called. And forgive me for that. I, I just get nervous. I get nervous. And I mean, this is a miracle, just me being here. I rejoice tonight, and Mom and Valerie and Sheila can tell you that about five months ago, if everybody had come up and hugged me like everybody did, it would have overwhelmed me. I'd have had a seizure. But tell the devil I changed my mind. Man, I'm about to have myself. If I can't run, I'm going to get somebody to run for me. I was, I was reading this, and it said, Warning, do not move the rollator while seated. Well, I can't run no more, but if I take off in that, somebody catch me. Resist him with the devil, uh, with the Bible. Resist him with the blood. Now this is what Dawn did. Little, Sister Brandy, little Dawn. She started, she said, Nathan, can't you pick up your Bible and read? Man, I'd pick it up and I'd shake and I'd just, so she started, t- I mean, she had scriptures all over the house, didn't she? I mean, the bathrooms, the kitchen, doors, not today, Satan quoting, I mean, Christian mottos, Christian verses. And I'd go in a dark place, Mom would start reading the, the verses to me. Ashley would start reading verses to me. Abby would start reading verses. And, uh, and I, remember, I remember one day, it was just me and Abby. And I, I mean, she's 15 now, and she was scared to death. And, and she said, Mama, don't look leave me alone with daddy what if he has a seizure and I was kind of getting nervous and I don't know why brother Jeff I was getting nervous but Abby just grabbed my hand she said hey we gonna run the devil out of here and let's just start praying you know what Abby was kind of trying to say just tell hey man just to, just tell the devil you changed your mind the by the Bible Ephesians 6, 17, take the helmet of salvation, the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God, that resist him with the blood. Revelation 12, 11, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. When Satan charges you, when he combats you, when he capsizes you, just lean on the Bible and lean on the blood. You know what? Woo, you all are preaching. Man on a walker today. Brother Jeff, forgive me. I'm having myself a t- I mean, I'm having myself a time. I may never get to go anywhere else, but I'm having a time. I, Mama, I was getting ready to leave, and Dawn sent me a text. She said, act like you got some raisin tonight. I said, baby, they know me. Resist them with the birth. First John 5, 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith you listen you got to resist them you know what else well not only the Christians resistance but what about Christians reminders every now and then I just want to remind him of some stuff you know what tonight I'm telling you that I ain't that I I've changed my mind and the devil may try to come back at me tomorrow. I may just have to remind him that I changed my mind. Amen. 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 Yeah, I, listen, I want everybody here tonight to leave encouraged. I want everybody to leave here, listen, l- l- with a smile on your face. Yeah. Amen. Listen, there's enough. A lot of folks say I, I can be, uh, you know, I can turn the church into the comedy barn. But there's enough out in this world to make you want to cry. Get mad, frown. Now, I know the pulpit is a serious place, and I want to honor the Lord and all that. But I mean, the Bible says if in this world we have hope only, we'd be of all men most miserable. We ought to be the happiest people in the world. Well, Well, preacher, you on a walker. I could be in a wheelchair. I can't feel my left leg, but I can still feel my right one. 
I've done treatments today with a man and I'm not making light. He's in a wheelchair, all crippled up like this. Couldn't do nothing. Had to have a nurse bring him in. A nurse stays with him 24-7, don't have no family. Had, I mean, if he had to go to the restroom, Nurse Kim had to go with me. You know, it can always be worse. When you think you've got it bad and you're ready to quit and you're ready to give up, just get your eyes off yourself for a little bit. Look at somebody else. It'll let you know how good you've got it. And listen, I can preach by experience because there for a few months, there's old oh, Nathan, poor, poor, pitiful Nathan. I mean, you all pray for First Free Will Baptist Church. I remember one Wednesday night I went in, I said, tonight I'm going to be preaching on the characteristics of happy Christians. And before I knew, I had everybody depressed. <laughs> I mean, I, I was. I was going to preach on blessed is the man and happy are ye and all that. And I was like, I can't feel my legs. I ain't never going to get to drive again. And, and I remember I said, man, I can't feel my left leg. And Sister Valerie said, yeah, preacher, but you can feel your right one. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to remind him of a few things. First off, he's a liar. He's a liar and the father of him. There ain't no truth in him. Bible says in John 8, 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Can I give you a hint on this one? <laughs> Remind him he's a big old loser. You say, preacher, listen, I got Bible for all of it. Yes, sir. I, woo! Isaiah 14, 12 and 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Revelation 20, 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of, of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. He's going to lose in the end times. He's going to lose all the eternal things all because he's a big fat loser. A liar, a loser. Somebody asked me to give you something else. Oh, thank you, Mom. I mean, everybody died on me. He's a low life. He's a low life. Is everybody okay? First, First John 4, 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Matthew 28, 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Listen, he can't handle resistance. He can't handle reminders. He, 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 can't, he can't handle rejection. God gave me something today while I was at treatment, and, and I, I, I topped it up. I hope he'll let me use it. I want to give him glory for it. and I just shared it from my heart, and I'm going to give it to you here in just a moment. But I'm telling you, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 27, Neither give place to the devil. You've got to reject him. You've got to reject his temptations. Does the devil ever try to tempt anybody? Oh, yeah. Now listen. The sin is not the temptation. The sin is given into it. Amen. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep it from building a nest. I mean, the devil will try to tempt you and entice you, different songs, people walking in front of you, how people dress, things on TV, music, literature, all these different things to try to entice you, but you have to reject his temptations. And when you feel like you're getting ready to slip up, just guess what? Say, hey, I've changed my mind. Bible says, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there hath no temptation 
taken you, but such as is common to man, God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you'll be able to bear it. Now, can I share my heart with you? I thought about this because I was just praying and I was studying over the message, what God had gave me while I was at treatment today. Reject his talk. What he says to us, I have to reject it every day. This is, this is my heart. Jeremiah wanted to quit. Amen. I said at the beginning, what did Jesus tell Peter? He said, Satan desires to sift you as weak, but I'm praying for you. He said, after you're converted, go and strengthen the brethren. Amen. There was a lot that wanted to quit and a lot that wanted to pack up and a lot that wanted to give up. And, but I, I've, got, I, I've got a word. This is for everybody. But preachers, hear the heart of your brother tonight. Sometimes the road will get lonely and friends will get few. Sometimes the burden is heavy. It seems like the trial will never end. But don't you quit. Just endure. When the frustrations are high and the funds are low, when the worship is dry, and the amens have dried up when the altars are empty and the baptismal waters are still don't you quit just endure just press on when your wife is weary and your children are discouraged and you're ready to throw in the towel don't you quit endure like a good soldier see you don't quit because we serve a great God he can equip the guilty he can bless the burden he can calm the troubled waters don't you quit just keep on trusting and, and just endure. He can diffuse the disgruntled. He can extinguish the fires of the demons. He can give peace in the midst of the storm. I know it's tough. I know it's hard. I know you get weary. I know it gets lonely. I know the road is rough. But don't you quit and just keep on enduring. You've got to remember that the road gets long and the valley gets wide. But don't you quit because the one who called you, he'll nourish your soul. He'll overcome the obstacle. He'll provide every need. He'll quiet the gossip. He'll revive the spirit. He'll satisfy the longing heart. He'll turn your night into day. He'll use your weakness and he'll give you strength for the journey. He'll visit with the hurting. He'll work when no one else can. He'll revive the exhausted. He'll give zeal to the weary. I'm telling you, don't you quit. Don't you give up. Just keep pressing on and just endure. People are dying and going to hell. Hatred is rampant in this world. Paganistic beliefs are being propagated all around. Lies are being told as truth, and truth is being called lies. But I come to tell you tonight that King Jesus is still on the throne. His hand is still on the throttle. One sweet day, we're going to arrive in glory. We're going to get to climb up in his lap. He's going to hold us in his arms. We're going to say, Jesus is Lord, and we're going to stop and say, Wait a minute. It's been worth it all. It's been. Mom, it's been good for you. For us. For as much as in me is, I've been ready to preach the glorious gospel. Reject his terror. His temptations, his talk, his terror. Second Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Listen, Christian's resilience. Lastly, a Christian's resilience. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. This is my wife's favorite scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he sh shall direct thy paths. Listen. Tell the devil you changed your mind. He is not, he's not able to handle it if you rely on Christ. You got to rely on the Holy Spirit. You got to rely on the Holy Savior. Amen. Relying means to have full confidence in Christ. You got to be committed to Christ. You got to be sold out to Christ. You got to be counting on Christ. You got to be submitted to Christ. And Satan can't handle a Christian that is sold out. That's right. You got to rely on Christ. Listen, rely on the church.
I mean, it's almost embarrassing to say that at times I could not pray for myself. But my wife prayed for me when I couldn't. And my family and churches and preachers prayed for me when I couldn't. You know, sometimes our faith gets flat. I'm reminded of Mark chapter number 2 when the man was sick of the palsy and he could not get to the Lord. And the Bible says that four men got him there. And when they couldn't get in because of the press, they didn't quit. The devil probably said, just go on back. But they said, I changed my mind. Yeah, man. Boy, there's a lot of folk in the Bible just changed their mind. But I've kept you long enough. I know what you're saying. Please don't start talking about people in the Bible that changed their mind. Hey, I'm glad Jesus didn't change his mind. He could have called 10,000 angels. Yeah. Amen. But he said, Father, I'll go. He said, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me, but not my will. Thy, be, why, thy will be done. I'm glad he didn't change his mind. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Man, that would make a Presbyterian kick the back out of the robe. <laughs> I mean, that's good. Rely on Christ, rely on the church. Uh, 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 let me, I got ahead of myself. You remember when they lowered that? Uh, can I just sit down a second? You remember when they, uh, they got up on the roof, they tore the roof apart, and they lowered the man down? What did Jesus, what does the Bible say? When he saw their faith. Not that man's, but their faith. Now, I'm not, hey, I'm not going to get up here and act like old Superman preacher. I believe in being transparent. And I mean, my faith has been flat at times. I mean, God's given to every man a measure of faith, but I mean, mine was just about snuffed out because of the devil. Now, I know people always say, well, well, who brings on sickness? I don't believe God brings sickness on. I believe he can allow it to come into life. Sometimes maybe to humble us. Sometimes, and listen, I'm going. Listen, I've had. Well, I, I'll just say this: I've had people just walk away, brethren, and 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 folk that just say. Uh, may, I mean, I've actually had people say, maybe there's something in your life. D- don't you think for one minute that I went to God, and or don't think that I did. And however, I'm trying to say. Let me put it this way: I checked all the boxes off. I said, Lord, if I'm out of your will, if I've done anything, if there's sin in my life, if I behave, I mean, hey, I want to get I want to get right. Can I just be real and you all just leave it here? I had a, a preacher that nobody here knows. And I love him, want to go to heaven with him. I preached for him for years. And, and I'm saying that I wasn't going to say it, but I want to say this to, to say thank you to everybody that's here. I had one brother, he said, Nathan, he said, you had to ca- cancel on me back in the fall. He said, probably just won't have you back. He said, because your liability, what if you fall on me or on the church? Or... And I'll be honest, Brother Jeff, I thought, man, Lord, that's it. Nobody will ever use old Nathan. And, you know, and that's all right. If, if God never wanted to open another door, if that's what he wants, fine. I, I've got a pastor's heart. I love pastoring. But when I was asked to come down in September for your anniversary, when you called me, and Brother Jeff, you said that you was obeying the Lord. That was, I mean, I want to be here for the Lord, and I want to be here for you all. But can I be honest, and this might come across selfish, God let me come here, but not for me. I think I'll just tell the devil I changed my mind. I 
I get I get cards from folk and you all just don't know. You don't know the encouragement and the blessing that you've been. And I said, Lord, I said, just let me go and try to be a little bit of help tonight. I mean, we got a full house tonight because everybody heard Joe Arthur was coming or something. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. No, listen, you don't know how this has helped old Nathan. You got to rely on the prayers, and I'm coming to a close. I'm, you got to rely on the prayers of the church. You got to rely on the praise, prayers of the, in the church. Rely on praise in the church. Rely on the preaching of the church. Rely on people in the church. In Romans 8, 37, everybody knows this. Woo. Nay, and all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm thankful that the devil can't handle Christians who have submitted their life to God. Our resistance he cannot conquer. Our reminders he cannot conquer. Our rejection he cannot conquer. Our reliance he cannot conquer. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 31, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. If God's for you, if he's all you got, that's all you need. And there may be somebody that come in here tonight and... All day you've been thinking, man, I just maybe not even go to church. Not even go to this revival. Not even, you know. But you know what? You just told the devil that you changed your mind. I never have heard this dear family that sung in my goodness, blessed my socks off. There'll be times that the devil might just say, don't sing, nobody's listening. <laughs> just get up at the piano and the microphones and say, devil, I changed my mind. I think I'll just resign. I think I'll give up pastor and I won't ever preach again. I won't be a deacon. I won't be a Sunday school teacher. I ain't going to go back to church. I won't get in the choir. Hey, we can excuse after excuse after excuse, but just look at the devil and say, hey, I've changed my mind. Amen. I don't know what to do. I'm tired. Maybe a uh, Preacher Jeff, whatever you want to do, I want to give an invitation, but maybe Sister Angie sing Savannah, maybe the family want to come back and sing whatever you want to do. I, but I'm, I want everybody just to bow your heads and to close your eyes. And listen, this altar is open, and you might not be able to get to the altar. It ain't about the position of your body about the place it's about your heart and so if you need to talk to the Lord tonight just talk to him just talk to him maybe the devil's got you ready to quit but I just want you to purpose in your heart wherever you add in a pew make it a place of prayer and altar place of self-examination and say hey what the devil meant for evil God meant for good and I'm a change in my mind I'm a change in my mind. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for letting us come and be here. Thank you for all my brothers and all my sisters. I've enjoyed the choir. I've enjoyed, I believe, the Louder family. Oh, what a blessing. Lord, thank you for letting me stand and preach for a little while tonight. Lord, in a church full of people that I love with all my heart. Full of men of God that are my heroes.
Lord, I pray that you would help us to keep on keeping on and keep on marching on and keep on trusting on and keep on believing on and preaching on and praying on and leaning on and help us to endure, help us to persevere, help us to not quit. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Obey the Lord if you need to be saved, if you need to rededicate your life, if you just need help. Whatever you need to do, okay? the service tonight. How many enjoyed the man of God tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many enjoyed the singers tonight? Amen. Appreciate, appreciate God and what he's done in his house tonight. Amen. Thank you, preacher. I don't know if you want to go to the door or you want to wave at him or watch your head right there. Amen. I want to, I need a couple of ushers right quickly. I'm going to take up an offering. Everything you give goes to this man of God. It won't be filtered through this church. It goes to this man of God, okay? Um, maybe God laid something on your heart months ago and you didn't get to do it. Amen. Maybe God's told you tonight. But I appreciate the best. I've learned.
peace is mine. Just lean on.